Let me help get you started with the first exercise, which was really an impulsively assigned exercise. And again, assigned only in the sense of I'm not grading this, but I encourage you to do it. All right. So um, if we look at the end, I said uh, at the end of chapter one is an exercise, and that is, can you use the code chunk in figure 2F to create figure 2I, right? And then at the minimum, here's some things that you need to do. I added um, some additional uh, instruction for this, but it may have been too cryptic. So that additional instruction was in this announcement, ggplotsci.r, which number two, I said, uh, the setup chunk in the intro chapter analysis has this code, right? And in order to get this code to run, you need to have a folder named R in your main project folder and a file named ggplotsci inside of that. So that's what that's what this is right here. Here's my project folder. Let's just, here's my project folder, the folder named R and ggplotsci. And in the how to create a RStudio project, I showed how to get that, where that ggplotsci R file is and how to get it into that particular folder. So um, let's, begin to think about how to do this assignment. So we want to go to our project and let's create a new R markdown file. And we're just going to call this chapter one. All right. And let's save this to the RMD folder. Chapter 01 dot rmd all right we don't want any of this junk there and we need to add a bunch of libraries so let's go to our textbook and here's chapter one we're going to copy all these libraries and put it into our project. Put it into our code chunk within the project. Okay, so here's that mysterious code here, ggplotsci path. Here, here, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and just run this and show you what it's doing. Okay, this last line will only run if you have a file called ggplotsci.r, located within in our folder, located within your project. So, <clears throat> so let's look at the path. All right, this is the path to that R file. It's the file is within a folder called R. That's within a folder called Applied Biostatistics. That is the project folder. So that's all set. We're good to go there. Having done that, now we want to uh, grab these data. So I'm going to copy all of that. I'm going to make a new R chunk, paste it into there. We may need to modify some of that, all right? Actually, it's all source data figure two, so that's, that's good. Of course, we need to get the data. So let's get the data source data it's figure two source data there we go we're going to download it there it goes it just downloaded let's get that data file into the downloaded data file whoop still downloading there we go let's get that downloaded data file into the data folder 
super important. We're going to be getting data, data from all kinds of different sources. So we need to have that very well organized, each source. So this particular data file came from this paper. So let's copy the name of the paper, go back to our hard drive and embed this file into its own folder called Ask One Inhibits Browning of White Adipose Tissue. Okay. Now we have the ggplotsci.r file within the R folder. We have our data file within the data folder. Everything is the same as uh, that we need for creating that plot. So it was figure two, let's see. We want to copy the code for figure 2f to create figure 2i. So let's go to figure 2f. Right, figure 2f. All right? And we need to be able to we need these other components, so we need all of these figure 2f components. So here's the import Let's go to R, create a new chunk, All right? Now this is figure two I that we want to import. Let's look at our data. Hold on a second. That's another data file. We need to let Excel open. There it is. Okay, source data figure two. There's figure two F, and we're just going to do the exact same thing, but figure two I. So right there. So the range is A265 through G266. So we're gonna call it range two I. I've already forgotten what the range is. Uh, to A265 through G266. All right. And what are those treatment levels? I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste it into the code. All right. And I'm going to put that within quotes. And this within quotes. Again, the kinds of things that don't need to be in quotes are our objects. So for example, this file path isn't in quotes. You don't have a, you don't have a, a word called file path. File path is an R object and it contains there you've defined file path. It's an R object. Okay, it's over here in your environment. At least if we run it, it's in the environment. There. Now it's in the environment. Here's file path. It's an R object. There's the value that it takes. Okay. So we've got that set. We need to change that range to i we need to change that to figure 2i uh its value is not glucose infusion rate its value is we need to know what 2i is let's go back to the paper Figure two I is liver triglycerides. Liver TG 
and the name of uh, the object that we're creating. We're creating an object, figure 2i. We're going to populate that object with these data from Excel. We need to turn that data sideways. So we need to transpose it. Where is our data? Right? We, we want to turn it sideways or transpose it. Right? Uh, and then we need to melt it. Once we turn it sideways, we need to stack the two columns. And so that's melting it. And that's what each of those steps do. I'm going to run it. We can now view figure 2i. So I'm just going to run that particular line. There it is. There's our data. All right, so let's go back. How do we continue to... We need to fit a model. In order to get the plot, we need to fit a, the model. So let's copy that over. All right, figure 2i. We need to change our data. So at this point, we haven't explained at all what these sorts of things are doing. So this is just copying and pasting and running and hope, hoping it works. We will learn quickly what these steps are actually doing, right? But we need the data, the correct data, figure 2i, right? We need the, this, this is the model we're fitting here. The thing that we're plotting, we're plotting, we're plotting triglyceride levels against treatment. So names figure 2i gives us the column names of our data, right? So we're going to plot liver triglyceride against treatment. That's our model. And we're going to call that figure 2i model 1. Go back. We're going to just keep doing the exact same things. We're going to take that line of code, paste it in, and just change the names. Paste it in. All right, so it's figure 2i, model 1. So we want to replace that. And we want to replace that. And that's figure 2i, and that's figure 2i, and that's figure 2i, and that's figure 2i. Let's run that. That all runs nicely. All right, what else do we need? We need to plot the model. So I'm going to grab all of this. Copy it, make a new chunk, insert, and just change the appropriate parts. All right. Uh, so it's not, we don't want that. Let's, let's do a search and replace. Everywhere we have figure 2f, we're going to replace with figure 2i. All right, nice. I'm just gonna run this first. Nice. All right. Does it run? Not bad. Okay. Uh, interesting. So there is actually something missing that's an interesting error. So there's something actually missing in this code here that needed to be up higher. So I'm going to add that, right? 
This is just a position. I'm going to remove all of those. Actually, I'm going to comment that out. Comment. Comment. Oh, glucose infusion rate. All right. Our, the, the Y variable that we want to plot, again, is not glucose infusion rate because we changed the data. So what is it? It's uh, liver TG. Let's type that in. And there's our plot. Oh, except we call it glucose infusion rate. Type two. 2IgG, somewhere I've got, there we go, liver TG. That'll change the name of the y-axis. We're plotting the right thing, it's just the name is incorrect. Run that. There we go, all right. So what we did was we basically used another analysis as a template to create a new statistical analysis. And we've not really looked at that because we wouldn't understand it at this point anyway. And a new plot, All right. So what we're going to do in the next couple of weeks is we're gonna to begin to fill in the actual statistics so that we understand what this is. What does it mean to fit a linear model? What does it mean to get the coefficients? What does it mean to get these estimated marginal means? All right. So all of that part is going to be filled in. But everything we do this semester is just going to be a variation on exactly what we've done right here.